Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as um, you can see, my name is Janice Clark. I'm from Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I work at the business support function, um, which is based in Aldershot in Hampshire. Um, I don't actually train any of our employees who rent out the cars. And in fact, I've never actually been um, near a rental branch in terms of working. So my role is quite unique um, in terms of um, what I actually do. And um, being based in the business support function, I'm training lots of different departments, in fact, nine of them, uh, everything from my contact center to account and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, why we made the decision to um, base some of our roles at home and how we went about it. Okay, so um, the first question when you're thinking about any kind of flexible working, and that can be either office-based or home-based, is why are you actually looking to do it? What are you trying to achieve? So really it's starting with the, the who, what, when, why. So when we're thinking about the source, we're actually talking about who are going to be your agile workers and what kind of roles do they do and what are you looking to achieve with them. When you think about the time, you're thinking about the times of day, the times in the evening, the times at the weekend that they might actually be involved in working and that's going to be a significant factor in deciding um, whether it's appropriate for the agile workers to be based at home or in the office and how you're actually going to structure their working week and what kind of flexibility you're going to offer. In terms of location, um, so um, can it be home-based? Can it be something that is mobile within the geographic regions that you cover? Can it be something that they can be in one office one day and in another office the next? And finally, um, thinking about the roles, thinking about the scope of the roles, and as I start to, to talk you through our process and how we went about looking at which roles could go home, um, sometimes for some companies, security will actually be an aspect of that. Um, you there's a lot of trust involved in allowing people to take your systems home and have free access to them. A conventional view of home working, or flexible working in fact, will actually really focus on the benefit for the employee. So it's all about, can I work at home in my pajamas? Can I get up half an hour later? Can I reduce my travel costs? Things like that. But um, that viewpoint has actually evolved over the years into looking at how home working or agile working can actually benefit the employer and what's in it for the employer. Because that's going to impact our bottom line. It's going to impact our results. So when we started looking at home working um, in terms of enterprise rent-a-car, it started off with our contact center. Um, we evaluated that the contact center was going to be the most logical department um, for us to actually trial this with. So we started off with a pilot, a pilot program. Very nervously, um, we actually kept our remote workers within 50 mile radius of the office. Um, what if the system broke down? What if the server didn't work? Um, what if it all went wrong? So 10 employees all within 50 miles so that if it came to it, they could actually come into the office and they could carry on with, um, with their, their, their function. And that was written into their contracts. Um, but we did have the technology. Um, we did have the, the capability to actually, through our servers, um, link our remote workers up to our system. And um, in fact, the contact center role, they're dealing with a variety of different types of queries. So they need access to four different systems. Um, contact center being the um, one-stop shop that it is, is actually there 365 days a year, seven days a week, between seven in the morning and midnight. And um, after six o'clock, our customers don't actually think about who they're calling. They'll just call a number um, and they just want to speak to somebody who's there. So um, the, the number of programs that our home workers actually have to access is really quite significant compared to other employees. So could our technology support it? Yes, it could, but we were a little bit nervous. Um, so um, then we started to think about, okay, so in terms of home working, um, we need to look at this in reverse. So if this is going to work out, if something goes wrong in the office, if the office is evacuated, if the server crashes in the office, and we have our home workers linked up to a different server, then we can carry on. Um, so um, in terms of a disaster recovery perspective, it really made sound business sense um, to not have the whole call center all housed in one building. Um, space issues. When I joined Enterprise Rent-A-Car um, back in um, 2005, we had 120 employees. Um, 
This week, we went above the 500 employee mark, um, and this is just in business support. Um, so as our fleet grows, as we um, grow more branches throughout the UK, we need more support employees um, to actually pr um, provide the backup functions um, in a variety of different roles. So. Um, we needed to actually expand and we were starting to run out of space. So yes, there was an option in the building that we're in to take on another floor. We're actually now, um, when I started, we were on two floors in one building. We're now on three floors in two different buildings and um, our home working operation has grown significantly. If it wasn't for that, we would need two more floors. So um, there were lots of cost savings associated with um, following the home worker route in terms of alleviating the space issues. In terms of um, what we call preference-based shifts, it offers flexibility. It offers flexibility for the employee, but it also offers flexibility for us. Um, the contact center, which as I said, was the first role that we sent home, um, our peak um, call rate actually comes through between six and eight in the evening. Sometimes that can be slightly less predictable and the calls will start um, trickling through from about 25 to 6. Um, employing people to come in and work for just two hours isn't a viable option. So we started to think about flexible working, agile working, how it could actually suit um, a variety of different people to perhaps work three hours in the middle of the day and maybe two more hours in the evening. Um, so there was just this flexibility that um, mothers could log in while their child was at nursery log back out again and then when their partner came home from work in the evening they could maybe log back in. Um, in terms of students, in terms of um, carers which these days with the dynamics of families changing the, the carer isn't just the mother, it could be the father, the grandparent. Um, so we actually have some grandparents who are working flexibly and actually providing childcare for their, um, their grandchildren. So um, this really gives us flexibility in terms of um, if we have a, an advert goes out last minute that um, we haven't actually been told about and until maybe a couple of hours before, um, if our marketing department have taken on cheap space or something, um, used, that used to be a problem. We would actually be paying to get an advert, but we wouldn't have the resource to actually answer the calls. Um, so now we can actually send out a text to all of our home workers. We can't force them to log in and start taking the calls, but there will be um, usually enough of them that are looking to do a bit of overtime so we can actually get quite a fast response. If we had um, perhaps higher sickness one day than others, then we can actually get um, home workers to log in. Um, when, the, um, when the snow starts to fall, last year we didn't have any, but the year before, we really felt the benefit because we didn't have people phoning in and saying they couldn't make it into work because they didn't need to leave their homes. In terms of the customer journey, if you've got employees who are happier in their role, who aren't having to rush into work to start at six o'clock in the evening, who aren't having to come into an environment where it can really be quite noisy in terms of a contact center. Um, everybody's talking over each other and, um, it, and it really can be quite distracting from actually providing excellent customer service to the, um, the person on the phone. If you're in your own environment, it's just so much quieter. You can really focus on the customer. And also in terms of queue lengths, um, just in terms of the time to get through to the call center, um, we've usually got an immediate response. Um, and um, we're, we're really proud to see the reduction um, in terms of how quickly calls are answered, because that does improve our customer service. So, um, as I said, we launched our phase, um, phasing and pilot scheme in um, April 2011, and we specifically recruited 10 people for the home working role. So, um, we, we didn't really know in terms of what caliber of employee we were actually going to attract, um, but um, we, um, as I said, had to have them within 50 miles of the office. 
Um, we did train them in the office. We wanted to get to know the employees and um, we wanted them to experience the company culture. Um, Enterprise was founded back in 1957 in the States. Um, we've been in the UK for 20 years and we're still family owned despite being global. So in terms of our mission statement, our founding values and the overall company culture, that's something that is really integral. It's really part of who we are as a company. So there was that slight nervousness about, are we going to dilute that? Um, it's becoming um, increasingly um, challenging in terms of maintaining that culture as we expand. But if we're going to actually not have our employees in the office with us experiencing the culture, then that could dilute it even further. So, um, as you can see today, um, we have actually now grown to, um, it says 112 there, we actually went up to 115 this week. We're actually recruiting um, at a rate of about eight home workers each month, so that will continue to grow throughout this year. We've now opened it up to other departments. It was so successful in the contact center, and we really saw an impact on not just um, reduction in um, the, the queues for the customers to get through, but in terms of the capture of the bookings, um, that started to increase as well. When you're employing um, for a contact center, you're usually going to attract um, perhaps, um, in, in terms of the average age, looking at the demographics within the contact center, um, we were actually finding that it was around about 25. Um, our average age is now 37 and a half years old in the contact center because we're attracting a very different caliber of applicant into the roles because they can be based at home. Um, so, um, as soon as we kind of cast our net and thought, we're less nervous about this, we don't need to stick with this 50-mile um, geographic restriction, we started to look at the benefits that it could actually offer to some of our other departments. Being based in Aldershot, it's a former garrison town. Um, a lot of the army have left. Um, the, um, the population in the area um, isn't really increasing fast enough to keep up with our growth in, in terms of the attraction of candidates. So this just opened up. Um, a much wider um, talent pool to us um, in terms of we could actually recruit from all over the country and, and not just within that 50 mile radius. So some of the departments that we have based at home now include our damage recovery unit. So um, we have over 60,000 vehicles on fleet that, and unfortunately customers do damage them sometimes. So in terms of recovering um, any loss um, in connection with that damage, we actually have that role based at home as well. We actually have our vehicle repair role based at home. Um, we have um, engineers who will actually go out and inspect damage, but we also have a core team of um, examiners who are home-based, who never actually leave their homes. They're actually inspecting, technology's fantastic these days, they're actually inspecting vehicle damage by looking at images on a high-resolution screen, and then they will provide authorization for vehicle repairs and so on as deemed necessary. Um, we have um, very recently um, expanded this further and we have a number of our HR professionals are now based at home. So it tended to be quite contact center, quite um, sort of departments that, um, that they're not necessarily making the bookings but they are connected with the contact center. But we're getting braver and braver and um, in terms of looking at the flexibility and looking at the employee engagement um, that we've seen, um, we've got um, a team of four HR professionals who do a combination of working at home and in the office now. And um, I've actually recently employed a, a training and development specialist um, who trains our home workers, who's actually based at home herself. So um, she's using Adobe Connect and her um, new employees will actually connect up using the internet through the Adobe Connect platform, and she can actually share screens and do anything that's necessary to actually take them through their first four weeks of training. And by the end of those four weeks, they're fully productive employees, and um, then they will be passed on to a team manager who's also based at home. So their manager's based in their home, the employees are based in their home. Our team managers are managing about 20 people now, and it's all done remotely. 
So um, some of the benefits that we've seen, as I mentioned, we've got a much wider talent pool. Um, we're recruiting in all sorts of different um, ways. We've been quite innovative recently. We've had tie-ups with the MOD um, in terms of ex-military personnel um, who've been particularly interested in perhaps some of the vehicle repair positions and also damage recovery. Um, we're using mums.net. Um, we're working with Remploy and also local um, job centers in terms of um, getting people who've maybe been out of work for a while back into work. Um, in terms of um, the, um, the opportunity to work at home, um, there are some people who um, maybe haven't worked for three or four years who can actually get back into work, but just maybe due to lack of confidence um, they would actually prefer to work in their own environment and then gradually increase their confidence before um, having the option of either remaining as a home worker or perhaps pursuing a career opportunity in one of the regional offices. Reduce costs, training and equipment. So um, in terms of what we were doing initially, we had to pay expenses. If we were going to have somebody come who perhaps lived in Luton, come down to Hampshire and, um, and train for two weeks in the office, they were going to need something to actually cover um, either traveling expenses or perhaps a, a contribution towards hotel um, costs if they were coming from further afield. So um, now um, we're actually training at home. We've been able to also extend our training program, so it's a lot more comprehensive. We were trying to cram it all in, so to speak, so that we could actually send home um, fully productive employees, and it really wasn't enough and um, we were finding that there was a lot more hand-holding needed and coming into the office and then some, sending somebody home that could actually be counterproductive because they'd get used to having the, the coffee machine conversations and then all of a sudden they'd be at home and they weren't having them anymore. And um, we, we were also finding that some of them were having too good a time and, and getting um, quite close to each other. So there was um, just a bit of a fear of the separation at the end. So this way, um, we're doing as much as we can to make them um, form a team, form a bond with their colleagues, but it's a different kind of bond because they're using all sorts of innovative um, ways of communicating. Um, we use Office Communicator, and from day one, we will get them um, actually communicating in pairs to find out a bit about each other, and then they'll come back into the Adobe Classroom and introduce each other to the rest of the group. So um, that's really just um, introducing them to not just the, the culture of enterprise, but also the culture of homeworking as well. Um, our retention. Um, our retention has increased. Um, we are finding that, um, again, because we're attracting a slightly different um, type of candidate, that they're actually staying with us for longer. Um, so in terms of contact center retention, um, there are lots of companies that um, are kind of posting out sort of 60 to 65% retention in contact centers. Um, we're actually at the moment at 79%. And if we look at 120-day um, retention, so um, our new recruits who stay with us, train, and are still with us beyond the probationary period, we're actually sitting at about 95% at the moment. So we're very comfortable with that. When we look at some of the more professional departments outside of the contact center who are based at home, um, our retention for those departments, um, for some of them it is in the very high 80s, mid 90s, um, depending on the, the job function. So um, we have seen an across the board increase of an average about 5% in terms of people staying with us. If you're moving to Wales, it's not an issue. You can move from Hampshire up to Wales, you can take your job with you. Um, you can still work, report to the same manager, you can still earn the same salary. And, um, and in some locations, you can actually buy much cheaper properties. So we do actually have employees who are relocating into cheaper areas and not having the worry of actually having to find themselves a job before they do that. Um, so. Um, my next point is Calibre. Um, we do have some business owners, and we have business owners who are starting up businesses who are looking to supplement their income. 
And um, for them, um, it's really helping them to perhaps dip in and out of doing some work for us as well. And we can offer that flexibility. Um, you could work from seven until nine in the morning, focus on your own business, building that up throughout the day. And then you could come back on and do a few more hours in the evening. Um, and then we're open, as I said, seven days a week. So there's Saturdays and Sundays too. Um, increase morale. Um, it's, um, it goes without saying that if you're in an environment that you're comfortable being in, not that there's anything wrong with, um, with our work environment in the offices, um, we have lots of very happy employees who come into work, but um, there are certain individuals who really do feel more comfortable in their own environment and they do find that they're a lot more productive. Um, it takes away some of the stresses of um, getting stuck in traffic, fighting to do your school run, and then having to drive an additional 20 miles. Um, there are all sorts of reasons why people um, are actually choosing to, to remain in their own homes, and, um, and they can still be as professional as somebody in the office. Um, I often joke with um, when I go on to do some of the... Um, introduction to the corporate culture type training that I do um, and I like to do that myself for some of the new employees just to give them a bit of a change if we just had one trainer who was there at the end of Adobe for four weeks it would be a bit mundane so we try and get different people um, coming into the Adobe classroom and that way they get to know people and can put some um, sort of names to, to job functions and faces. We share photos and um, we'll share we webcams if they're comfortable with doing that. But we quite often share the webcam from our end because we're respectful of the fact that we don't want them rushing around tidying up the house and having to put their makeup on and, um, and worry about what they're wearing. So um, we'll share ourselves. We're in our offices and then they can get to meet us. Um, and that works quite well. So um, I've talked about um, some of the benefits for the, the company that we've seen so far, benefits in terms of the employee. Um, well, um, dress code, if you do want to sit in your onesie and work, that doesn't mean that you're not going to be productive. Um, my, mo my own mother's worked at home for years. She runs her own business, and she does have to get herself into... She's not in a suit, but um, she does have to get herself into an attire that she feels professional in. Uh, she find that, finds that that works for her. But um, some of our employees are a bit more relaxed in terms of um, their attire. So that saves money as well. Um, and that's quite important in, in some of the roles that um, are more entry level. Obviously, the salary is not going to be as high. And um, just wherever you can save money, you um, wherever it's possible to save money these days, it is just so beneficial, no fuel to get into work, um, not having to worry about dress, um, dressing up for work, things like that. Um, and also in terms of time, um, it really does save you time um, because you can actually work for the whole time that you're kind of absent from your life. Um, your day-to-day -day life, you're not having to add on a couple of hours each day commuting. Um, so that really does give people a lot of time back, which can reduce childcare costs. Um, so lots of benefits that um, our employees are seeing. We're not actually seeing any lateness either. Um, we do occasionally, and um, people do quite often say, well, how can you be late for work if you're at home? Um, but there is the organization factor. Um, so it could be that um, you're just going to have one last cup of tea before you log on. You leave it a little bit too last minute. And we do have some home workers are still um, perhaps dropping partners off at the station or um, taking children to school and need to get back to home to work. Um, but in terms of lateness, um, we have seen a significant reduction. Instances are few and far between. So um, it wasn't all plain sailing. Um, we, we've got there in the end, and we're really proud of what we achieved now, and we're really happy with how it's gone. Um, but in terms of some of the initial challenges, um, just in terms of um, technology, we started off and uh, we actually provided equipment. Um, so for each of the job functions that went home, we provided a thin client, so not a full PC, but a thin client, and that connected up to a terminal server. That wasn't particularly stable, 
and that frustrated. So obviously I'm talking to you about engaging employees in the corporate culture. Um, we, we like to feel that we're very organized and um, that everything works like clockwork with an enterprise. So having the employee perception out there, well, these guys are actually a bit disorganized and my system keeps going up and down and it's really unstable. Um, that was something that really bothered us. And it was also something that really bothered the employee because we were actually paying them. We were paying them to um, sit at home and wait for our IT team to get them back up and running again. And that bothered them. What are they thinking? Are they thinking I'm making this up? And obviously we weren't because we, we, we could see that there was a problem with our server. But hardware challenges, IT support, and also agent IT capability in terms of getting themselves back up and running. Um, there are some simple requirements if you've actually crashed to get yourself started back up again. Um, so all of that was a challenge. And, um, and it was actually losing us money initially. So we actually changed over, to, after doing lots of research, we changed over to bring your own device. So now for each of our roles, um, within the um, eligibility criteria for applying, you need to have your own laptop or desktop PC of a certain specification. Um, our employees do actually like that. Um, most employees who would be applying for the roles anyway do tend to have a, a laptop or a desktop PC. Um, the specifications aren't massive. If you've bought your laptop or your, your PC within the last th three years, 99% um, of the time it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, they know their way around their own laptop and PC, so that just gives them the comfort factor as well. Um, and um, we saved our, um, changed our policy document to reflect that. We changed the software, so we're actually, um, they're logging in through a, a Citrix gateway now, and we've also moved the server that they're actually um, connecting up to, so it's actually based in the UK. Initially, rather clumsily, they were actually logging in through a server that was in St. Louis in the United States, so um, stability's a lot better, and, um, and that keeps people happier, um, because some people um, do actually think about leaving their role, <laughs> Um, because the, the IT isn't actually there, and, um, and that can really cause massive dips in engagement. And we changed the training, as I said, so um, there, every single role that's based at home has the capability for them to actually learn remotely. And um, our team managers, going beyond the initial four weeks training, find creative ways. Every single week, somebody finds a different way of doing something. Um, there's all sorts of sharing screens going on and um, they're able to dial in and listen to calls and, um, and really just provide that support. Um, you can have people on calls sending through chat messages to colleagues. We've expanded it so that it's not just their team manager that's supporting them, it's their colleagues as well. And that really helps them um, to actually feel that they do actually have colleagues in fact and that they're, they're not just um, isolated. Our IT support is actually on site in Aldershot now, and, um, and that's absolutely fantastic because um, we've actually got somebody in that role who has, was actually um, in the IT role who has actually been in a contact center role um, previously and then did an IT course. So we've actually got somebody who has actually done the job, um, has a bit of experience of the programs, so um, they're really best place to help.